What do you even do when you see conflicting best practices? On one hand, we have Thought Leader Ben telling us React is a good framework, but then there's also NoobMuffin99 telling us AngularJS is good. Like, who do you listen to? The correct answer here is neither of them, because JavaScript frameworks are a disease infecting the modern web, and it's something we need to exterminate. Now that we got that out of the way, and we can all agree that React.js is a best practice, I want to talk more about best practices because I've been seeing this mentality that is kind of starting to tilt me a little bit. And it's very common among junior developers and newer developers, but really anyone can fall victim to it. It's having an obsession about always following the best practices no matter what you're doing. And this doesn't sound like a bad thing on the surface, but I see it holding back a lot of developers. I know you have this problem. Whenever I ask you why you're doing something and you reply back to me, it's because it's a best practice. Okay, okay, okay. So um, why are you holding that ice cream cone upside down? You haven't heard? This is a new best practice. Oh, I see, cool. There's nothing wrong with following someone else's approach, but it starts to hold you back when you are just blindly following these best practices and not trying out your own ideas. For example, junior developer Todrick was considering putting everything in a single component, but he read in a blog post recently that it's good to split up your UI from your logic and create dumb and smart components. So. That is the technique that he's going to be using for the rest of his life. The problem is, best practices are not universally useful. They are good in a specific situation, but if you take them out and you use them in a wrong scenario, they are just much worse. So the mistake I see developers make with this is they find this best practice that they really like, and then they start spamming that everywhere. And they just think that they're a god of coding. And look at how much great code that they're writing following this practice. And in reality, they just look like a giant fool. One of the things that I did this for was pure components in React. I read somewhere that they are very useful and that really they should have been made the default in React. And so then I got it into my mind that, you know what? I'll just use them everywhere. So naturally, I created a code snippet for myself called RPC that I would type and it would just expand out into a whole peer component for me. And I would literally use this for every single component I ever created in React. If you were to ask me why I was doing that, I would tell you that it was because of performance reasons. And it's kind of half the truth because you can use peer component to reduce the number of times your components render but you have to be careful about how you are passing in props when you do that. And I wasn't doing that. And so it was effectively doing nothing. It was just a regular component and there was no reason for me to spam it everywhere. One of the reasons I think people earnestly follow best practices is because they want to avoid writing bad code, which is a good intention, but I think backfires on you, especially because one of the universal laws of programming states that writing bad code is a prerequisite to writing good code you need to stop trying to skip steps. This reminds me of a story I heard once about an art class. I guess they were doing pottery and the teacher let them choose how they would be graded that semester. So one, they could choose to be graded on the number of pots they created. So the more pots, the better the grade. Or two, they could be graded on the quality of the pot they made. So they only had to make one pot, but how good the pot was how they'd be graded. And so some students did it one way and some students did it the other way. And one of the things that happened at the end of the semester when the teacher was going around and grading everything is she noticed that the students that made a bunch of pots actually came up with better pots at the end of the semester compared to the person or the people that were just working on a single pot. So applying this to programming, what I would recommend is instead of focusing so much about following best practices all the time, is start experimenting with the code that you write and trying different things and different techniques and seeing what you like and what also works well for the current project that you're on. I would also challenge you to start creating your own best practices because it's a very simple process that pays off and I'm gonna be letting you in on the secret of exactly how that works. Step one, you're a complete noob at this point, so you start off by just implementing someone else's best practice, or you just come up with some random technique that we want to try out, and you implement it. And when you're done with that, you can move on to step two. This is the important part, and the part that people skip, but it is what differentiates the carrot farmers from the thought leaders. And all you need to do 
is reflect on what you just did. You evaluate what worked and what just kind of sucked and you iterate on the idea and you come up with something new. It may just be a slight tweak from the previous best practice or it might be something radically new. But you take this new method that you now have and you just take it back to step one and you now implement that. Then you just rinse and repeat. The newer you are, the more cycles you're gonna have to do to get anything good. But the more experience you get, the less you're gonna have to do that and just the more improvements you're gonna be able to make along the way. Next thing you know, you might actually come up with something good and you can be the one writing those best practices articles and cash in on some sweet thought leader points for yourself.